Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover the continue loop keyword and how it can be useful. Alright, so I've gone ahead and created some basic loop script that we're going to use for this example. It's nothing special. It's a for loop and it's going to go from 0 to 10. If our variable i, which gets increased every time the loop uh, does an iteration, if i ever equals 5, then we're going to have some random stuff here. It's going to say congrats and a tooltip. It's going to sleep for a second. It's going to tell us i equals 5, sleep for another second, then clear the tooltip. However, if this isn't true, if i is not equal to 5, then it's going to sleep for half a second. If I run this, what's going to happen is everything other than i equals 5 is going to sleep for 5 seconds. That's what this says. Let's go ahead and try it. The tooltip is showing up on my mouse cursor. There you can see i equals 5. Now it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, that's cool. The thing is, this code looks pretty ugly. And this is a really simple example. Like, this isn't anything complicated. If you're trying to make a, a bot or a, a program or anything that's actually complicated and it involves some level of complexity, it's going to get horrible if you do stuff like this. It's happened to all of us. We end up making the pyramids where it just keeps going in and in and in with more indentations. Continue loop is a good way to make sure that doesn't happen inside of your loops. Let's look at how. So for starters, I'm going to ignore this code right here and I'm going to start over at the top. I'm going to do if our variable i is not equal to 5. Doing the uh, pointy brackets like this means not equal. So if i is not equal to 5, then sleep for our 500 milliseconds and continue loop. And then I'm going to do end if. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this if statement here. And I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to remove that indent. And we are done. So this is the exact same code. If i is not equal to 5, we're not going to do this tooltip. Before, our code looked like this, where we had this long if statement and it didn't look pretty at all. But if i equaled 5, then it would show us the tooltip. That's exactly what's happening here. Even though our tooltip is not in an if statement, it will never get executed because we're using continue loop. As long as i is not equal to 5, continue loop gets called. And what that means is it'll skip the rest of this iteration. So all this stuff down here won't happen. No matter what we put down here, if continue loop gets called, it'll skip the rest of the iteration. Everything below it won't happen. And that's why this works. The only way this code here is going to be called is if i is equal to 5. Because if it's not equal to 5, it's going to skip. And for more comparison, you know, you can see the code here. If I scroll down, this is what we had before. It's not very clean, not very pretty. And again, this is a simple demonstration with something more complicated, more involved. Making your code like this is going to be a problem. So that's what continue loop does. The code in this method and the code in this, they're both the same thing. They do the exact same thing. It's just, this looks a lot nicer. Also, it looks more professional. All right, so let's take a look at this code and see how it runs. I'm gonna press F5 and nothing's happening. Congrats, I equals five. Cool, nothing's happening anymore. And the script has exited, so it worked. Everything happened as it was supposed to. We didn't see multiple tooltips. It only happened when i equaled 5 because it continued and it skipped every time i was at 5. Lastly, before we go, you can use continue loop in any kind of loop. So it can be a while loop, a for loop, etc. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new, and thanks for watching.